Hey everybody, what are you doing in that box? You're not supposed to be moving to the new workshop just yet. That's right, today's video is going to be a vlog. We're going to talk about how things are going with moving to the new workshop, which hasn't started yet, but I've been doing some work. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. Welcome to another shop vlog. And today I'm going to be bringing you guys along with me as I do some work and sort through some stuff and otherwise further work on moving out of this workshop and preparing myself to move into the next one. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, if you're a little curious, want to be nosy or otherwise just hang out in the shop a little bit with me, stick around. Well guys, the great pack up has begun. As you can see, it is actually well underway, although it's probably very hard to really visually see a lot of change on the lower work that's been done. But honestly, I've been working down here probably off and on for about a week, maybe a week and a half. My number one goal with this has been to sort and separate what am I keeping, what do I want to take to the new property, what do I really not need, and can I donate it, sell it, or is it just junk? That's been a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. I've probably reduced or taken out probably five contractor trash bags full of just junk and trash. Things that are, I don't know, project pieces that I thought I would get to, things that I thought I would repair, random bits and bobbins and just, I don't know. A lot of stuff that I, I see it, I'm like, what was I thinking? Why did I save this? It happens after about six years, I guess, right? Yeah. Whenever I started down this project, mostly mentally started to prepare, I thought ahead to, okay, what kind of storage and how am I gonna pack this stuff up? What's the easiest thing to get? What's the most affordable thing to get? And what can be something that honestly, I might actually be able to reuse rather than just have spend money on some kind of box to move stuff and then it's done, throw it away. I came up with this and this is not a huge solution, but I don't know, maybe I'm the first in the workshop world to use it. These are what are known as banker boxes or document storage boxes. They're made out of cardboard. They come flat packed. You assemble them. They have a lift off lid, which is awesome. And inside, yep, it's just a box. The cool thing about these are that they are not super large. I mean, you're looking at maybe a foot by 16 inches by maybe a foot. So if you slam pack it full of tools, it's not going to be so heavy that it can't probably hold the weight. These boxes are designed to be slam packed full of paper and you know this much paper is a lot of weight. So in that sense they are for me perfect for storing and organizing, separating and moving my workshop. I'm able to get them in bulk packs off of Amazon but also Lowe's or Home Depot does sell similar boxes. That's why you see some are labeled and some are more plain cardboard. The cool thing about this is I'm able to separate. So for instance, I have a box right there behind the camera that has all my wooden utensils in it. Period. That's what that box is. Over here, sandpaper. Back there, tool wall, Craig jig, paint brushes, tape, epoxy kits, caster wheels, mending plates. It goes on and on and on. The cool thing is I'm able to honestly get super picky and very specific with my labeling and packing. And then later when I'm in the new shop, I'll be able to look at the boxes, know exactly what is in each, and then retrieve the items. My plan is to use some metal storage shelves that we have. Um, there's two in this room, there's one packed up as well, you know, storage side. I'm going to use those in my new workshop as freestanding shelves and just load it up with the boxes. And that's going to be my workshop organization storage for probably a little while. 
and probably a little while longer. In this sense, it does give me the option to reuse and use these long term. I like the fact that they have lids. They should stay pretty clean inside and be in a portable size. Should be easy to get down what I need and put back in place. I also looked into storage totes, you know, the plastic ones you see for organization and such. They're outrageously expensive. Ones of the similar size, about these boxes size, are like seven, eight, twelve dollars and up. That's just not in my budget. Sam's not made of that quality of money. The price of the boxes range from as cheap as like two dollars and twenty cents a piece for these from Amazon to about I think two seventy five for the ones from Lowe's or Home Depot. That's a lot more easier of a pill to swallow. That I can wrap my head around, and my wallet doesn't scream as much at me over buying. So that for me is my solution. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if anyone out there is watching this trying to get ideas on how to pack up their workshop, but if so, there you go. Check out Banker's Boxes, maybe it'll work for you. Bringing you guys around on a little miniature tour here, kind of to show you how I've been systematically destroying the space. Over here is my lathe station. All that's left is the lathe, the stand itself. All the tools and accessories have been packed up into one box. That's awesome. The lathe is ready to move and go out the door. Um, how am I going to do this? Over here we have Laser Town. The Otour is set up on the same little table station I have. I have my wooden utensils in a box and the slate coaster is back there behind it. That station is going to stay set up. That is staying for the foreseeable future until we physically leave this property and go to our next one. I've got to still maintain my ability to make the products that we sell, be able to create them, make them, and ship them out to customers. So that is staying put. That's why nothing looks different in Otour Town. However, you'll see the hand tool wall is gone. It is all packed up. It's not destroyed or anything, but it's no longer here. Over here in CNC Town, not a lot has been going on other than just more storage on top of the CNC. That is something that really can't be packed up that much. I mean, I'll put all the accessories and bits that are in the drawers of the CNC table into a box. But other than that, the table is going to stay whole. The CNC is going to stay whole. I'm not going to try and disassemble it at all. I'm just going to hire some muscle, AKA family, to come help me load it up into the trailer and we'll move it whenever that day comes. I don't know if I'm going to move the CNC very soon or if it's going to be one of the things that kind of waits till the end. I don't have to have it for business purposes. I've stopped doing any kind of CNC product offerings on our website and our business for now, both from a supply problem, you know, as far as finding materials affordable, but also just because it's easier for me to shut down that portion of our business than try and maintain and keep everything going, but then also try and move everything as well. So I'm not worried about losing money on the CNC front because it's been disabled or, or turned off on our small business website for quite a while. Moving on around to tool wall, uh, most everything's been taken off. What you really see is just the cordless tools left up there. And those are ones that I have yet to just, just carry and take out of the workshop. They're not gonna go into a box. They're just gonna physically transport from here to our moving trailer and then to the next building. I have left a selection of items on top of the sander, things of, you know, like a screwdriver, pliers, um, drills, stuff like that. A miniature small little toolkit is going to stay in this workshop to allow me to have you know that basic level of functionality but otherwise this kind of stuff like the oscillating sander it's just going to get carried over and the boxes and stuff like that so for the most part this area is packed up although it doesn't look like it much it's kind of one of those things where i still may use this some of the stuff here and it's just going to get to the point where it's moving day go day i'll throw it in a box throw it in a bag and we'll take it over at that point the dresser that all this rests upon has no plans. I have no intentions of taking it with me. It's going to be staying here. Whether or not it may uh, eventually can make its way over, I don't expect it, but it's never really been a great storage solution for me. It's only ever really given me a place to just overload the drawers and then have difficulty opening them because you know they're overloaded. And then otherwise just a storage surface space for items. I can easily replicate that with a piece of plywood and some boards. So it's not worth it to move that large piece of furniture to the new shop. And it's going to stay here for now. Over here we have the automatic self-heated glue and finish cabinet. It's empty. That is definitely going to go over to the new property. Because I'm going back into an uninsulated, unclimate controlled storage space workshop. So yeah, I'm going to have to use that guy again. The shelf behind me, these organization little tote things like... I don't know. I don't know what you call them. These guys 
they're empty. They're actually going to be donated. I don't use that style. I have a specific style that I really, really like. Um, actually sold by Home Depot and they lock together. They're affordable and they're a lot more durable than these cheapos from Harbor Freight. So they're going to get donated. They're not going to the new property. I'm not sure if I'm going to take the cabinet that they are in mainly because, well, what's the point of having a wall cabinet if you don't really even have a finished wall? I mean, yeah, you gain storage, but I may not need it since I'm going to be using the box and freestanding shelf um, approach program. One, two, three step program. Yeah. So I don't know that I'm going to take that right now. Same thing applies with this cabinet. This was built in place. The face frame is glued together and it really is two carcasses put together and then glued all together. I don't think I'm going to take this wall cabinet. Yeah, it's a bummer. You know, that's a lot of storage, plot expensive, such and such. But right now I just can't wrap my head around taking it apart, transporting it over, making sure it stays fine, finding a place to put it back up and all of that really being worth my very very limited time right now versus the payout in the end for now it is storing things that have i've gone through totally gone through all of this and sorted it and reorganized it into boxes so the things that are in here are ready just to be carried out the door as well um, as well we have the banker box central there are it looks like 12 banker boxes here on this little workbench thing and then a couple of things below that's ready to go out the door as well too Circling on around from the cabinets, we have hardwood storage. That's just gonna get tossed in a, maybe my trash can, honestly, and carried over to the new place, as well as the racks on the walls. That stuff, I can't really pack up in a box, so it's kind of waiting for move day. Same thing with my joiner planer combo. That's on wheels. It is ready to roll out the door. The table saw is behind it, and I'm having a little bit of second guesses on the table saw, whether I'm gonna get rid of this one and sell it, or if I'm going to Take the more frugal approach and the more realistic approach and just keep it i still do not like the size of that table saw i still do not like the router table built in and i just really don't like it much at all however it's paid for yeah it's paid for it's kind of a hard pill to swallow to say yeah well i know we're kind of trying to move everything and such and such but i think i want to spend more money just because you know feelings mm. that's a hard one to swallow my wife, on the other hand, she says, no, sell it, get a couple hundred bucks out of it, whatever. Get yourself a new one, something you like. And um, I don't know, maybe it's because I complain so much, she's tired of hearing it. <laughs> or more, more likely, she's just cool enough to know that, yeah, that's a really big table saw. You need to really have a better workflow. And you know what? You kind of know your workshop. So sure, if you say it's something you want to get and we need, okay. So pretty cool. And then that kind of rounds out, you know, the perspective of the shop. Um, my workbench is right here behind me. That's going to go over. It is by no means a good workbench, but it's something. It's paid for. It's built. It's assembled. It's ready to go. So, yeah, it'll get hauled over. The hard part is going to be to decide what line am I going to draw as far as what stays here for my laser engraving, slate coaster, utensil production world. And then what goes? I mean, that's a lot easy whenever I say it that way, but things such as workbench, should it go or should it stay? Or power sander versus my sanding blocks, should they go, should they stay? I'm sure I'll work this out as I kind of work things out, but today, right now, that's just kind of the thoughts in my head. It's been really weird to pack up my workshop to take down all of the various things that, honestly, I've spent a lot of years putting up, a lot of years you know, hmm, oh, I think the clamps will go there, or I like this there. It's very strange to pull it apart. I mean, I guess yeah, it's strange to me. This has been the first workshop I've ever had that, I mean, I built this place, so I was able to choose relatively, you know, the design, the layout, the placement of the windows and everything. So it's kind of weird to take what I've sculpted into what has really been good for me and just say, you know what, let's pull it apart, pack it all up, and hit that reset button. That being said, I'm not remorseful in any way. I'm, I'm totally cool with it, I'm happy with it. It's just gonna cause a lot of rocking of the boat and rippling of the waters in this weird mean, mean time, or in the meantime, between this shop and the next. Speaking of that weird mean time, I'm also not gonna have the luxury of time to finish out my next workshop before I move into it. So I hope you enjoy the white walls and relatively nice looking scenery of this shop. 
because in a couple weeks we're about to be thrown back into bare stud walls and shedsville <laughs> which is fine i'm not knocking that at all i a lot of i think a lot of my viewers out there you guys are probably in similar boats you've got storage sheds or you've got unfinished garages or you've got whatever kind of structure and it's probably not pretty and polished and perfect if it is just just don't tell us don't make us feel bad so i don't say that to to think oh oh me oh my going back to a pitiful little workshop no it's just more of videographer mind sam is going to say oh man there goes your nice white backdrop there goes your cool tool wall for the people to look at as you ramble on aimlessly ah. well guys i really think that this is just about all i can do until moving day i will try my best to film and document that for you guys i don't really want to bore you with oh let's move and you know box by box scenario so it's probably going to be really cliff notes and maybe more event highlights like hey here's this hey here's that so it's not gonna be that amazing i probably may not even shouldn't mention it i guess got your hopes up didn't i so we've looked at renting a u-haul box truck but it won't fit it physically will not fit down here near the workshop it would have to be at our driveway and i think it's going to be kind of a hassle and annoyance to carry a lot of stuff that far in addition i looked at renting their box trailers that looks like a pretty cool option but I think I may hold that off for something such as the CNC and laser engravers or kind of the more sensitive or fragile objects. I'm going to be stair-stepping this move. We're actually going back to the property in a couple of days. And for that trip, I'm going to be taking all the boxes and probably the jointer planer stand here and the lathe, lathe stand, clamps, basically anything that'll fit in our truck bed utility trailer that is actually my father-in-law's that we're getting to use. It literally is the bed of a truck that's been turned into a utility trailer, so no major beauty awards, but that thing is super handy, and you know what? It's free, so you can't knock that. I think that's gonna be it for this shop vlog, guys. I just wanted to, again, bring you down here in the workshop as things are happening, give you some more information, some more updates, and otherwise fill you in with this really weird process of leaving my workshop for another one but not totally cutting and running in one day and kind of just spreading the work and pain out over a couple of weeks if you guys have any questions or comments leave them for me down below otherwise take care and i'll see you guys next time in the workshop